All right. Well, I am super excited because I've got uh, two gentlemen with me today. So this is going to be the uh, two for one special uh, who are both uh, business partners and they're crushing it online. And to talk about their stories, we've got business partners, John Spellman and Brian Rankin from, uh, I keep wanting to say from, we were saying that before we- hit From New Jersey. Button. Yeah, from New Jersey, from New Jersey, from New Jersey. Sure. So uh, although, uh, Brian, you you were a, a manager at a Gold's Gym in Orlando that I used to work Orlando. out at. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I used to work out there, yeah. That was about a year and a half of my uh, life down there. Yeah, ran all four or five gyms uh, and Gold's Gyms and I had a radio show on ESPN while I was down there, yeah. Yeah, nice, nice. So you, you've got quite the story. So yeah. uh, as does John. So uh, yes. before we get into all that, just so everyone has a little bit of context and uh, who you guys are and how we all know each other, sure. um, you guys were at Brand Accelerator Live, and correct. Mm -hmm. And Brian was actually uh, in the mastermind that I uh, was. We were both facilitating. in that mastermind. Yeah, you guys were both together. in the masterminds. Yeah. No, you weren't in the same room, were you? Yes, yeah, thanks well, that's for right, remembering That's right, that. you were. That's right, that's right, that's I'm, right. You I'm were. usually more memorable. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I can barely remember well, what I had for breakfast yesterday. But yeah. uh, in all honesty, um, that mastermind group really significantly changed our business. And that's something I'd love us to be able to focus on, on okay. the, the value of what you provided for us and the lessons that came out of that as far as our business was concerned and potentially many others who are listening. I think okay. there's a lot to be said about the value of that. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into the value of the masterminds. And you guys also did a mastermind that I uh, just facilitated on my own, wasn't part of yes. uh, the event. And that I definitely remember everyone in, uh, yes. uh, which was very memorable because as, as I've come to learn, John is a very memorable guy. So yeah, sure. uh, before we get into all of that, though, mm -hmm. how do you guys even know each other? And then how did you end up getting into the e-commerce space? Sure, no problem. So let me take the lead on that. So my history is I've always wanted to be an entrepreneur and it seemed to be a serial entrepreneur. So this has been going on for decades, quite frankly, as far mm -hmm. as trying to find that right thing. Um, years ago, I was, and I, we discussed this in the mastermind, I was involved in a, a business, brick and mortar business. And I learned the important lesson of the value of properly funding that business and how you, your sources of funding mm -hmm. and ultimately your source of funding should be the business itself. Uh, as a result of not understanding that, that business went uh, bankrupt. But, you mm -hmm. know, I just kept on going. And I was a member of a fitness club and Brian was my actual um, trainer. So don't okay. feel bad for how I look now. <laughs> But in the end of the day, we'll always be talking. We'll always be, yeah. So he's very successful in a lot of different things, except me as a client. Um, but we're always talking about our interests in business and our interests in trying to find that thing that was a, a model that worked with the minimal amount of um, staffing uh, mm -hmm. and employees and all those headaches that can occur. And we both clicked on the Amazon concept. And so that's our history about, we started about five years ago. Mm -hmm. So I think one mm -hmm. of the, the, the takeaways is perseverance is key. Number two, the mastermind principle, the concept of surrounding yourself with people that are understand things and can give you guidance is important, which, which really uh, requires open-mindedness because in my previous business, I thought I had everything figured out and obviously I had nothing figured out. So that was one of the inflection points uh, of our business, quite frankly, is what we learned out of that mastermind at, at Business Accelerator Live. So I'm sure we'll touch on that later, but that's a little bit of our history. We have a, a common background, uh, Brian and I, we both kind of come from broken homes. And the reason why I bring that up is that we both uh, have basically learned that you just figure it out. In life, you know, what I mean, you don't have guidance, uh, perfect guidance, you just figure it out. And so one thing that's been, um, I would say, a hallmark of our business is that we just keep on figuring it out. We didn't know what we were doing from the very beginning, just like everybody else. But you know what we did know was if we don't understand how to do something, reach out to people that do. And that's why we're so grateful to be connected with you, Kevin. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that helps. Well, thank you. Thank you. And, and now that I, I've jogged my memory, I just want to say this. You were sitting in the left side of the table from my vantage point. So if I was yes, sitting at correct in the corner, into the right table, next to yes, me. yes. And Joel was sitting to my left as the yes. co-facilitator. You guys correct. were on my left. 
uh, yeah. which would have been on the opposite side of the room for the door. You were maybe three or four chairs down, if I remember correctly. There you go. Okay, so no. yes, yes, yes. So I feel totally embarrassed that I- No, um, I'm sorry. I bombed that, but yes, no, 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 no. But I'm glad that the whole thing was impactful. So- Extremely. Yes, so let's talk a little bit about uh, kind of why did you end up going to Brand Accelerator Live and why did you choose to do the mastermind? So. Uh, maybe to give everybody a little bit of context, I'll, I'll provide a little bit of context there. So if you're not familiar, Brand Accelerator Live is an event I hosted with uh, uh, Scott Volker, who used to be known as the amazing seller. Uh, a lot of people started in Amazon world or just listened to his podcast. Now he's kind of, Scott has gone a completely different direction with his podcast. He's still an awesome human being. Uh, but uh, at one point I had approached him about, Hey, you should do a live event. So we did a live event together in September of 2019 in Fort Worth, Texas called Brand Accelerator Live. And we had offered the ability to also add on a mastermind day. So most people didn't take us up on that. There's about 200 people there and maybe 15 ish people, if I remember correctly, took us up on the mastermind. Why did you guys one decide to come to the conference and two, why did you decide to do the mastermind? Yeah. So like uh, John and I were big uh, educators. Like uh, we just, uh, I mean, we're both humble enough to know that we know nothing. So every year we try to like, you know, try to get more into like, just trying to under, understand. I mean, you get, you get stuff on YouTube, but everybody's like, oh, just listen to YouTube videos, read this article. That's all you really need. Only to show up in person. Personally, I think that's a lot of BS out there. You know, I think the most, uh, most stuff that we learned over through the five years we've been doing this has actually been mastermind groups mm. and actually going there and talking to people, things that you just don't get in a YouTube video. You know what I mean? Right. So it's, right. It's, it's, it's huge. Um, and I'm glad a lot of people didn't do the mastermind because we got more one-on-one -on -one attention. Than that's, one that's so true. And mm -hmm. a lot of the time, a lot of the one-on-one -on -one attention we got really changed our business for the better. But we're, I mean, we can be doing this for another 20 years and John and I will still be taking courses every year, yes. mm -hmm. about twice a year if we can. We just learn from different people, learn different things. And I think the moment you stop educating yourself is the moment your business stays flat or starts declining, you know? I mean, everybody knows whatever you learn at Amazon six months later, it's going to totally change anyway. You know, <laughs> oh, that's so true. That's Forget about what you did last that. year. You know, Sometimes it's whole... like week to week. Exactly. exactly. Like, like, what's going week. on? Yeah. yeah. Right. What are they changing? But yeah, that's so true that, you know, we sometimes get in our own little bubbles mm -hmm. and, um, you know, whether it's information bubbles or just our own personal bubble, like you guys at least have each other to bounce off ideas. A lot of people listening to this are probably totally on an island. Um, sure. And, you know, sure. they are surrounded by people who just don't get it. Whereas maybe they took a course or, you know, listened to podcasts or YouTube videos and somehow got into the Amazon world, but they're surrounded by people who just don't understand it. So they probably have, let's say for the person who's been operating um, on their own mm -hmm. and like on the uh, island, so to speak, uh, what, what do you, what do you, what would you say is the advantage of doing this over, you know, you also said, just figure it out and you just keep moving forward and figuring it out and maybe take courses. And so what, why do I need to talk to other people? Like what, what well, is the advantage? There? The value of mentorship. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you know, when I was uh, um, younger, a friend of mine got a big promotion at a job and he said to me, John, I, I, I can't do this job. I'm not qualified. I don't know mm -hmm. anything. They don't know who I am. And I said, you don't need to know everything. You just need to focus on the mastermind principle, which is a, a, from definition is surrounding yourself with people that know information that you may not know and ask them and, and learn from them. And so as, an, as a single business owner, the value of having a mentor is critical. So, uh, so the why should I do this? It's because if you want to grow and you want to get better, listen to others. If you want to remain the same and potentially do worse, listen to yourself. Mm. So um, Brian and I balance each other off extremely well with our ideas. And we really never make any major decisions without talking to each other. And that's something that I always wanted. I wanted to be able to, to connect with somebody and, and bounce ideas off because left to my own devices, it's a scary place in my own head. So it's a scary place in Brian's head and we, and we balance each other out with that. So I'm not sure if that help answers your question at all. 
No, I think that answers it quite a bit because we we oftentimes don't realize that we can't see the forest or the trees. Yeah. And sometimes when you're in a mastermind, and I'm not trying to push you know my own accelerator programs and things like that. I just think people should connect with other people, even if it's there's somebody you've been chatting with in a Facebook group and you've got a good rapport, start with them and just have a, you know, monthly call, you know, for 30 right. minutes, it, right. something, do Correct. something. Um, yeah. Now, what I have found is when you're in kind of like that group environment where it's a little more structured and somebody's talking about their problems and everyone's kind of answering it, one, you start seeing like, okay, other people have problems like me, other people have aspirations like me. Right. And other people have trouble seeing what's so obviously in front of them. But because of that forest through the trees analogy, they oftentimes are unable to see what needs to happen next. And someone else who literally is having the same difficulty with their own forest through the trees can notice it. So we can sometimes notice it in others. And so when other people point something out, uh, especially if it's in a supportive environment where other people are looking to help and there's, you know, kind of a mutual collaboration, not like, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. calling shaming each other anybody. out and right. shaming. Exactly. Where it's exactly. Just like but a, Kevin, you, you really did that so well because we were bringing up ideas and we we're like, why don't we do this? Why don't we do that? Why don't we do this? And, and you just kept on bringing us back to guys, this area right here is where you're most successful. Why don't you dig in deeper there versus going broad? It reminds me of that book, uh, Acre of Diamonds, where we mm. always focus on those other areas instead of the diamonds that are right behind our feet. We mm. literally had the successful uh, business model right in our hands, but we didn't see it because we were just focused on, oh my God, what's the shiny new dime or penny or whatever. And that you helped us with that and others in the room when we all as a mastermind used each other as case studies mm -hmm. oh you know we're a little slow but after the third or fourth repetition of guys don't you freaking get it we're like okay all right so maybe what we'll do is we'll listen to you guys and one of the key takeaways okay. was uh the the lady who was sitting to your left or our right okay. who suggested you know why don't you guys get that book uh profit first Oh, yes. And Mike yes, yes. McCallowitz's book. Mm -hmm. And the, the uh, interesting thing on that one is I'm from Jersey. Mike McCallowitz was a member of the Entrepreneurs Organization oh, back okay. in the day. I was a member of the Entrepreneurs Organization and I had the opportunity to be in his group. I went with another group of wonderful guys, but it's just a small world where now that book helped inherently change our business. So if there's anybody listening who wants to learn, um, a good model of how to run a successfully funded business is use that profit first model in that book. And I think there's one profit first for e-commerce, yeah. which really helped us. And we can get into how we you know, leverage that in our business, but that, that really was the inflection point for us. Okay. Gotcha. So, so basically you picked up a tip from somebody in the room and then you implemented that because you're like, okay, someone else is saying it because we all respond to social proof. And sometimes we think, oh, it's just the people who are buying on Amazon who, you know, they want to see the reviews. I myself am, you know, I, I'm not, you know, going to get sucked in by social proof and things like that. Whereas here it was something that was, you just heard someone else saying that they had a success story with it and try it out because in their model ended the why they said well listen if you if you do this you will get that mm -hmm. if you you guys are stuck in this phase which uh, quite frankly a lot of people are stuck in in businesses mm -hmm. you can actually watch it on shark tank and 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 signal the business the phase that they're in we were in the corporate debt uh, and uh corporate business line debt phase mm. of our business where we kept on funding everything by our own business cards and our lines of credit and we mm -hmm. just could not get out of our own way the bigger that we got the more debt we were getting into and that profit first book and the suggestion that that lady gave us was critical because it moved us into actually funding our business through the profit our business and now we're debt free which you know wow. was a lot i mean we paid off ninety thousand dollars worth of corporate debt in less than a year by being uh, diligent with that process and now i would say if you think about a business from mm -hmm. the phases of development you often think about well investor funding you start off the in, uh, the investors such as brian and myself we mm -hmm. funded our business together or you reach out the outside investors and you have them fund the business then the next phase is you use corporate debt you use credit cards you use lines of credit you do whatever you can which is mm -hmm. that crazy cycle that we mm -hmm. were in and we couldn't get out of our own way guys we we're paying off our inventory with our you know or with the profits and then 
eventually we learned that, hey, if you can actually get to the point of funding your business from the profits of your business and pay off that corporate debt, then you've got a very successful business that we're enjoying right now. So. Well, I know a lot of ears probably perked up when you said you paid off $90,000 worth of debt in a year. Yes. How did you do that? <laughs> well, sticking to the plan is our mantra. Okay. Um, you know, because because we can be very tempted to say, oh, let's just go back uh, to the line of credit and uh, just put more money on it and just keep on going back and forth. But no, so what we did was on a weekly basis, we created a formula that's in the book. And we stuck to that formula of paying off the credit cards before we paid ourselves first. Mm. Pay off the debt first and don't fund the inventory with the debt was how we were doing it. Um, and we just, every time we got that Amazon paycheck, we stuck to that plan. Mm -hmm. And as we worked our way down, we fo literally focused on the big business, the biggest credit card on interest rate first, paid that one down, then moved to mm -hmm. the next one and paid that one down, moved to the next one. And we had a special day, you know, when we were debt free and then we were able to move from, okay, now the paychecks that are coming into Amazon wise, we are able to replenish our inventory from that profit mm -hmm. and also create a formula where we have a, a percent of that for inventory increase. So we're funding the business from the profit of our business mm. and also taking distributions at a certain percent. So mm -hmm. as the business grows, we are mainly benefiting it from our uh for ourselves because of that formula yeah. uh, i don't know is that uh, a good answer yeah. brian or what do you suggest anything else? Oh, that, that's definitely definitely spot on uh what i enjoyed about uh that kind of formula or that kind of book it really a lot of people i think they they fail at this business because they don't understand the numbers and that was kind of us we thought we we thought we understood it until we took a bigger a deeper dive into the numbers and we're like okay we're making our mar margins are say you know 30 40 percent why aren't we seeing a profit like we should be? Let's go, let's kind of look back into it. And I'm like, oh man, okay, we have automatic payments on this that we don't even use anymore. Or we're, you know, let's, let's, you know, instead of sourcing here, let's source here. Let's get better margins on our stuff. So we just became more business focused instead mm -hmm. of being like, oh, you know, living in a fairy tale land, just throwing everything on a credit card and just kind of going that way. So I would say we, we, the business, business mindset in the beginning was, not good with numbers <laughs> not at all but not you know if you think about that saying mind your own business it means yeah. something a little deeper when you actually mind your own business yeah. and you look at the numbers and that's so mm -hmm. what we came up with a plan that on a weekly basis we literally reviewed those numbers mm -hmm. um you know you can say oh uh, i want to keep my head in the sand i'm just going to keep on winging it but a lot of it started off with Brian and I sitting down at the diner, I remember those nights, late yeah. nights, and looking at the products through Jungle Scout and, and deciding what's the right product that's going to give us the right product uh, profit margin mm -hmm. to make it get successful. Because a lot of people got into the fidget spinners world mm. and all those different things and things didn't work out. I could tell you, I know one of those guys very well. And <laughs> it just, you keep on spending money and growing a business on a low margin product, mm -hmm. it, that's challenging as mm -hmm. far as being able to, to grow that business successfully. And this was just United States alone. And what you opened up to us, the RIs, because this was something that we always wanted to do, was to expand internationally. But we, you, the international guy in my mind, were the ones who's like, you kept on saying to us, no, 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 focus on United States because that's where your bread and butter is. And that was very helpful to us. So we appreciate that. Well, good, good. So just to help everybody understand, you paid off the debt in about a year, which is amazing. I mean, 90,000 is not a small amount of, of money. Mm -hmm. And were you able to fund growth during that time? Or did you take a little bit of a strategic step back to be able we to took pay a, it? We took a strategic step back and made a okay. decision that we're not going to fund growth. We're going to, yeah, we're going to try to do things correctly. Okay. Uh, and then, then change it around. Once that debt was paid off, then Bam, we had a, not only were we replenishing our inventory with the profit from the sales, mm -hmm. but we were dedicating 60% growth. So not only are we putting our inventory back one for one, but we're adding 60% increase while also mm. taking a 35% as a distribution as partners and 5% for sales from use. So we have a nice bucket for the sales and use. And remember that mastermind where we literally talked about creating those bank accounts mm -hmm. and naming them. And, you know, so it's very important, I believe, to get into that room with somebody where you can roll up the sleeves and say, you know what, it's okay. I don't know how to do this. And mm -hmm. somebody else says, 
you know what, this is what you do. And if you're smart enough, you write that down and you do it. Right. You know I mean? it's, the, it's the three frogs on a log story. If yeah. there's three frogs on a log and one decides to jump, how many logs are left? I mean, how many frogs are left on that log? A lot of people say three. And the answer is no, because the, the frog didn't actually jump. You got to make that commitment to actually do the work. Mm. Gotcha. Yeah. That's, that's a very good analogy. So, okay, so you, you were committed to doing the work. You've paid off the debt. You've uh, uh, since then assigned a certain amount for growth. Mm -hmm. which uh, have you launched new products since paying off the debt? Brian? I've launched uh, different variations of products because okay. um, what, what's happening is uh, when you we're at right now, when you have a new product going in, we're only allowed to have about like 200 for inventory for mm. the new product. So we're trying to, and we can only max out a certain much. So instead of having like one variation where we're stopped that we can only do like 2000 or whatever, we create another variation we can get 200 and another variation get another 200 mm -hmm. so we're trying to like go wide with it um the once we start building up our, our inventory our biggest problem is we sell out really quick so we're, mm. we're breaking on things you know and that's a good problem to have mm -hmm. so we're not too aggressive with ppc um but our goal is to take that 60 to 65 percent into the that we make each month in net and put it back into new pro and put it back into it to increase our inventory increase our storage and that way we can, once we get to a point where we're like totally set in the U.S., then we're going to go to like the U.K., go to Canada, Australia, Germany, all these other places. Because we did do that. We did expand. And we, as a proof of concept, we saw that, yes, this product that we have, which is successful, yes, it can work in Australia, U.K., mm -hmm. Canada. And that was a direct result of, you know, getting some guidance from you. So while we had the proof of concept, we realized we got to, again, go deep and focus on U.S. first then move on to the international. Okay, gotcha. Now, are you guys in international marketplaces now? Not right now. We, okay. we pulled out to, because uh, we kept running out of stock really quick over there. We're like, you know what? Let's just focus on the U.S. because that's that's our huge money maker. Probably like 80% is going to be the U.S. Um, we want to definitely get into other marketplaces just for security, you know, just in case one of our listeners gets shut down or something like that. We have other, other countries that kind of back us up. Um, but right now we're just doing U.S. Hopefully uh, our goal is uh, next year we're going to get into like uh, two or three other marketplaces. Right. And by the way, we were those guys that went through that the, the hell of being shut down and dealing with uh, Amazon yeah. Bezos at Amazon.com and just, again, never giving up. Just mm. not just throwing our hands up, but, you know, and one of Brian's things has been we need to diversify off the pure Amazon model. And mm -hmm. so, yes, we do have a nice percentage of our business, small, but still it's a nice percentage coming of website sales mm -hmm. and uh, our eBay sales. So that's important too, to diversify that. And I think the fourth phase of a successful business is to be able to have uh, a growth funding. The mm -hmm. business itself funds growth into some other business. You know, mm -hmm. Ray Kroc always said about McDonald's, it was never about the burger, it was about the real estate. You know right. what I mean? So the Amazon can be about something else to leverage yourself. So you don't have a one-legged stool. So that's the future for us. But I'm, we're really enjoying phase three in my mind, which is the profit funding. While at the same time being extremely, extremely tempted to go back and say, oh, we got all these big credit lines. Let's just look back and double our inventory. Yeah. But then we're <laughs> going to be sucked back into that quagmire. So we're, we're actually monitoring that very closely that we don't, you know, we bounce off each other. You know, when I, he says it's a good idea, I say, no, it's not. When I say it's a good idea, he says, no, it's not. So that's very important to have that. If you say, what's the value of somebody to talk to? Yeah. I think that's the value of that. Yeah. And, you know, I'll just say this. I think you guys are in a much different place than you were before when I said focus on the U.S. I think you definitely would be in a spot for whenever your next peak season is yes. uh, to be set up in those other marketplaces to capitalize on chances are whatever your peak season is. If you're selling, let's say, Sharpie markers, only because I'm holding one in my hand. Uh, we'll just use that as an example. So if the Sharpie marker is back to school, I would make sure you're ready by the next back to school, which as we're recording this in early June, it would probably be missing the boat if <laughs> there's not already <laughs> things set up for that. But whenever your next uh, peak season is, whether it's Q4 or whatever, mm -hmm. I kind of already know what the answer is, but yeah. I'm not going to say it. Uh, yeah, you're exactly talking right. 2022. 2022. Right. Setting goal. ourselves up in the fall 2021 so that 2022 
Mm -hmm. we're going to be successful because that was another learning lesson about how to pulse this thing correctly when we when we place those orders so we're not out of stock for oh one to two months of our busy season Mm -hmm. right we've been down that path before yep again learning lessons yeah okay cool so um let's talk a little bit about you said you know being shut down and emailing jeff at so tell me about that scenario and how you were able to recover (laughs) brian you want to take that one where do, where do we start, man? Um, we've been uh, shut down with a uh, false IP infringements, probably, wow, I would say 30, 40 times, I would say at least. Back so, in the wow. day. So yeah. let's make that clear. Back in the day, we got some good attorneys on our side for that. Yeah. So the way, uh, like, I guess Amazon did it back then, I don't, we haven't been shut down in about, about two years. So people used to call up and be like, oh, you know, Brian and John are selling this product. Um, and it's actually my product. Amazon won't do any research and be like, oh, okay, boom, shut down. Mm. You know, then they're like, oh, you got to contact the person that, you know, created the suit against you, which is like ridiculous because, you know, they're a competitor. They're shutting you down on purpose. So they're not. <laughs> right. so, then we found out they did the same exact thing to 30 different people at yeah. least, right? Wasn't that the number or something we, like that? Yeah. So we, we hired a lawyer and uh, the lawyer basically, um, I don't want to bash any Amazon lawyers, but I wasn't a big fan of it. I feel like uh, we, we paid this money, then they sent a letter in and they'd be like, oh, just give us some time. You know, months can go by, you're not getting anything. They don't do anything after that. They just create this letter and put it in. I was like, you know, you know, I basically got fed up. I'm like, you know, F this, you know, I just literally copy and pasted an email and sent it out like every hour on the hour until one of the bots <laughs> was like, just basically like, okay, you're relisted. I'm like, all right, cool. Next day we get shut down again, send out a bunch of emails and just a bunch of emails and just one after an hour, every hour on the hour, just like until like they just got, I guess they got fed up and like, okay, this guy's people are not getting shut down anymore. So they kind of left this alone. You know? So th- this was emailing to, to Oh Jeff yeah. At- I mean, I would have Jeff at Amazon. I would have the dispute team The I mean, it's been two years. So it was like three or four different ways that you can, you can, send your uh you know your rebuttals back in and i would literally just like almost like every hour every day just like just copy and paste copy and paste because they're all bots you, you know right? that guy Kevin, gets, the, the you know, irritating guy that you just yeah. want to get rid of and say enough enough <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. Brian. yeah I, I can be overly annoying so uh, that's why i do customer service by the way <laughs> <laughs> yeah but uh yeah we've been probably shut down about 30 40 times and with about eight, probably about a good uh, eight or nine months you know just one after another um you know and it's just like you know it is what it is i'm just like rel- we're both re- relentless like i just, yeah. we just keep going at it you know yeah. somebody once said um i forgot who said it but it's like you're not in the you're not in the private label business you're in the problem solving business mm. you have to, under- so you have to understand that like it is going to happen like Things are going to happen see, every day, and you got to go. You got to, you got to, you got to go. You got to, you know, under you got to know it's going to come, you know. But uh, you know, you just got to be resilient about it. I think that's a that's a common theme from the from the moment we sat down at that diner. We talked about looking at the competitors and saying, "What are the problems that we see in the reviews, and how can we be better than them mm. in our service?" If you go back and you look at Amazon's um, mission statement is to, to be the world's most customer centric uh, company mm-hmm. and we want to be as, as customer centric as possible and also as forward thinking somebody once told me if you want to live your life successfully think like a chess player don't think mm-hmm. about this move now but think about two or three moves ahead so mm-hmm. we were very intentional from the very beginning on how we approached the business thank god because if we approached the business from a product that was not going to be successful then I think we would have been like, oh, we're not successful. You know what I mean? So I think it's very important to think ahead. And so I think what Brian was saying that always to think about the fecal matter that can potentially hit the rotary blade, then you're prepared (laughs) for how you approach it. I'm trying to be as politically as correct as possible. You know, this is the balancing act that we play between Brian and myself. But um, I think that's important that we both bring our own strengths. And while at the same time, we also can bring our own weaknesses, you know, which is important if you know that. Well, let, let, let's dive into this because, you know, I think for most folks to get into this game, they're solopreneurs, but some folks have business partners and sometimes, you know, that works well, sometimes it doesn't. Mm-hmm. For those who are looking to get into this with a business partner or they're, they have a business partner and they're like, how can we make this better? The two of you seem to have a very good working rapport. How, mm-hmm. what, what tips would you have for folks who have a business partner? 
or thinking about having a business partner? I'll give it from my side and then Brian can give from his. Yeah. From my learning experiences from the very beginning, what I said to Brian is I want this to be 50-50, not 51-49 or anything like that. Nobody has control, which mm. is like, you know, if you're really thinking about building out a business that, and, and working towards selling that business, mm -hmm. you want to think about the buy-sell uh, um, part of that mm -hmm. and how you're going to go about it, which is going to be a little, could be a little tricky as far as how do you go about selling a business when nobody is controlling the business, but mm -hmm. at the same time, it could be a wonderful thing because it's as a result of a dialogue and an agreement together. Mm -hmm. um, so that was from the very beginning, something that was important to me because I wanted to drop the ego. I want us to just, Hey, we both together don't know what we're doing, mm -hmm. but together, maybe we can learn. Uh, so that was an important aspect of how we went about it. Um, uh, what do you think, Brian? Yeah, I totally agree. Like, uh, you have to, you have to have two people that don't have an ego, um, or willing to, or willing to change, um, and, and learn and learn different things. Um, John is very, like, like I, for me personally, with the business that we're in right now, like I would never be, we wouldn't be having this conversation. It was just one of us, or at least I, I would never be able to do this business by myself with my other job and everything like that. I mean, you get this, there's so many moving pieces with this, with the Amazon. Right. I, I don't see how you, you can effic efficiently do it by yourself, you right. know? So John does his thing, his, his tasks. I do my tasks. Then we, then we meet in the middle for, you know, working on our business, you know? So right. Ver and, versus working in our business. Yeah. So that's important that, you know, he and I both have spent years, quite frankly, learning the value mm -hmm. of creating email templates, creating a, a structured response, you know, thinking about how we're going to do this mm -hmm. versus all the heavy lifting that's involved and getting really frustrated. So Brian is extremely good at pay-per-click. He's got some great numbers. Uh, mm -hmm. I know that uh, as far as uh, what he does, Kevin. and that's his yeah. focus. <laughs> Other than that, no value whatsoever, Kevin. Yeah. You know, it's embarrassing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, but, you know, we try to make them feel good. You know, give them that thing, give them pay-per-click. No, so then I focus on the finances and I focus on the, the customer service and then we well, whatever we do we bounce off each other which uh, I'm, I'm personally grateful for yeah one of the things we do is uh during the week we work we have our tasks and we work we work in the business and our we have our calls on Friday every Friday for mm. like five years we, we we do our call and for that hour half hour whatever it is we try to come up with ideas to work uh, on our business all right how do we expand what do we need to do to get there blah 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 and we set quarter one goals quarter two goals yearly goals and then we'd kind of do like a retro analysis and go backwards. So maybe at the beginning of the January, we'll do like, all right, where do we want to see ourselves by Q4? Then we mm. work back. And at the, the last day, say March 31st, last day of the first quarter, we'll be like, okay, what do we hit? Do we hit these goals? Why not? What was it? Almost like a SWOT analysis. You know, like kind of like what, what was, what's our weaknesses, opportunities, strengths, and stuff like that. So we're always trying to work on our business. Those are our weekly calls are. So if you're going to go in with a business partner, make sure you're getting weekly goal, uh, weekly calls. Yeah. And yeah. You know, listen, for anybody that's listening or watching, this could be overwhelming with the amount of uh, weeds that we're getting into talking here. But I can tell you that if these two idiots can do it, so can you. You know what I mean? Uh, and, and I mean that not uh, meanly. Mm -hmm. I mean that matter of factly. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we, we just have the ability to say, okay, how are we going to do this? And let's figure it out together. And uh, let's not get overwhelmed by all the processes. Let's figure out a way of keeping it simple so that we don't get overwhelmed. Yeah, so. focus on the end result and every day, do something every single day, do something and try to learn something every single day. Yeah. You know, because yeah. most people out there are not doing it. So you, you have you have an advantage right there just putting the effort. Yeah, and some of the emails that we receive, I still have printed out from five years ago to even to just, just this week of people, how grateful they are for our, our focus on uh, on what we do. And it's just, it's very oh, touching. Nice. But at the same time, it also highlights that, yes, you can have, number one, a profitable business mm -hmm. by focusing on the numbers and focusing on what we discussed. Mm -hmm. You can have a successful business by focusing on what we discussed. And you can also bring value to others by focusing on customer service. So that, that has been very important to us. That's awesome. And so what I kind of understood there was that basically you, you, you have your own weekly mastermind call, essentially. Yes. So the two of you get together and you chat through things. 
Uh, you set goals, you review your goals. Where are we on track to hit the goals? Looking back at the goals, what, you know, what do we need to adjust on the goals to stay with them? Um, have you developed kind of some overriding principles, which I think the answer is yes, but you know, like, how do you decide what your goals are? That's important because, you know, when you hear numbers of goals and you think, oh my God, from the mindset of being a corporate worker, you're like, those goals are being handed down and we got to adhere to them. Guess what? We get to create those goals. You know what I mean? Uh, and we need to be realistic. So you can, you can go back to the whole smart model, make sure that it, it is realistic and, and achievable. Uh, and then quite frankly, our goals significantly changed over the years. You know, our goal changed to, hey, we want to actually be profitable. Uh, so the question of how you do it, in all honesty, is being thoroughly honest with each other and not being misled by looking at our business and saying, okay, my big goal is I want to I want to grow threefold, while at the same time I'm running on a, a, a business funding model that is killing us, you know, so that would not be smart because we're not being honest, we're just being, you know, misdirected. So I think the how is just having an honest look at our business and deciding what is a goal that's appropriate for us. One of our goals currently right now is to remain within the profit funding model, not the not slipping back to the corporate funding because that's not going to help us whatsoever. Yeah. What do you think, Brian? Yep. Oh, Tommy. Um, yeah, so yeah, go for it. You. Sorry. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, some some uh, key models like uh, we always we always uh, want to have a financial we always want to have a financial goals to hit you know because every year we want to see growth over growth uh, which we, we do um, right now we're probably I would say John correct me if I'm wrong every year since five years we're doing at least a 25 to 30 percent year over year because um, mm -hmm. that's because we're putting a lot of money back into our business um, so we're projecting good on that we also like John mentioned before we want to have a like uh, Amazon, like our, our main jobs supported our Amazon business. Now, I don't trust Amazon. Amazon could shut us down anytime. I don't, I know I'm, I'm thinking we're taking, both taking advantage of this uh, great period right now of it, but I just, we're playing in Amazon's, you know, sandbox. I just don't trust them. Um, so we're taking whatever Amazon money we have now, we want to expand into uh, other marketplaces. And also we want to take some of the money. We also want to start getting into like real estate start dumping mm. for that money for the cash flow. So now we have like a plan C, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's where we're, we're kind of going right now. So our goals, you know, next year get a piece of property. Next after year after that, we have enough to get maybe two or three properties a year. So I'm looking, looking to stuff like that so we can start, you know, spreading out our buckets, you know, stuff like that. That, goes, that, that ties goes into, if you look at the, uh, yeah. so he's talking about financial goals. He's talking about future growth goals. Mm -hmm. He's uh, the third goal, which is very important to us, is what do we want to do for our education this year, mm -hmm. our business education, and that it would be business education would have to be tied into what our overarching goals are that we discussed in the other areas, yeah. which is the business growth and the financial uh, growth, and um, I think that's real important. Yep. Yeah, and I love that. So a lot of what you talked about there is being realistic about where you're at and what goals are achievable too many people get caught up and i know we've all probably heard this personal development analogy of you know don't focus on you know someone else's chapter 20 when you're at chapter three or whatever the analogy is yeah. you know it, it, it's like that so it's like you know what's going to get you to chapter four to chapter five to chapter six exactly. and you focus on that and you guys talked about you know focusing in on um tying it in like any education you're going to do with what are your more immediate goals because not getting caught up in shiny object syndrome and what are the things that are going to move the ball forward so it's kind of that i think tim ferris is the one that came up with this term of just in time learning yeah, yeah. you're learning when you need it you know maybe not like that day but at least like you know it's within a short range of time we're going to be using this information not oh i'll take this course because i might need it we've all been guilty of you know mm -hmm. responding yeah. to some facebook ad because we're like oh i might need that one day um and might then, might <laughs> right the context of digital might. dust in yeah. your hard drive or you never log into a member's area uh, yeah. guilty as charged um which, but another, which you know is something we really uh, mindful of the more successful mm. you become, the more stuff is going to be thrown your way. True. Congratulations. You're now a candidate for this learning lesson. Yep. And then again, it's like, wait, is it something that I might need or something that we do need, mm. you know, and that's important. 
And on Amazon, the more successful you are, sometimes the more new programs they throw at you too. And sometimes it's like, it's worth trying out new things. And other times it's like, this is just going to be a complete waste. Another money trap. Another yeah, exactly. money Another trap money was the trap. Amazon lending. Remember, right, right? we talked right. about that yeah. in our breakthrough. You know, it was like, whoa, right. look at the actual interest rate of what we're paying. Right, yes. right. Now we, so, you know, it's real important. We have two partners right now, you know, John and Brian, right? For, and when we're in that other phase, we had a third partner. That third partner was the bank. And they were mm. the one making the most money. They were making uh, more you than know, you know, we're making <laughs> everything. Yeah. Exactly. So we got rid of that partner. That yeah. Real important. So that, if anybody's listening who has years in the, in the business, work on getting at, rid of that partner. Yeah. And then, you know, because then that, then it becomes more enriching personally mm-hmm. to do this because we're like, oh my God, why, why do we keep doing this? And we're not making any money, but, you know, keep going. Yeah. So, yeah. I think a lot of people, they don't, they don't start off with enough money, enough uh, money up front. You know, they'll get into a, like a product and they'll like, you know, go, you know, with maybe say like $33,000 and they'll buy all this inventory, then they'll run out of inventory. They don't have anything else to back it up. So they get in the credit cards mm. and that's the whole snowball effect. Like yeah. personally, I wouldn't probably now that it's, it's pretty competitive. I probably wouldn't get into Amazon unless you have at least twenty to $25,000. Yeah. And personally, yeah, but, I mean, yeah. I don't know what, what do you, uh, whatever you think, Kevin, but like, I'd be curious to hear what you say, but you know, yeah. I think uh, we got in with 30, right? Was it 30 or 35? Around 30, right? yeah. Yeah. And that was five years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, because we we're like, if we're going to do this, we're going to do this right. And yeah. so, you know, even after all these years, while well, we did it uh, for, from the beginning, from that structure, uh, Lord knows throughout, we didn't necessarily do things right. But I mean, for bootstrapping of like 2,000, 3,000, of course you can get in. We don't want to discourage anybody saying you can't, but you also need to be realistic about your goals. Yeah. based on that. Yeah. Well, and where are you going after? So if you have two to 3,000, maybe going after protein powder uh, Correct. or you know vitamins may not be the best way forward because you're going to have to do a lot of marketing and you know some of those more competitive, profitable niches um, also have a lot more PPC that you don't necessarily see in the back end. They might be driving a lot of sales with Facebook ads that you have no idea because you, a lot of information is hiding in plain sight, but that's something that's harder to figure out. And so there's a lot of, there's a lot of pieces to it. And so I think it depends on, you know, if you're going after a very profitable hero type product, you know, that's going to be doing a whole lot of sales, be prepared. You're going to have to buy your way into the market. Whereas, you know, I, I would rather have 10 products doing three a day than one product doing 30 a day. That's just my personal take on it, especially if you're going to be going the model of, you know, kind of more tighter bootstrap because it's easier to bootstrap when there's less people going after it. But that's, that, that could be a whole episode on, yeah. you mm-hmm. know, product selection and things to think about because I do think, I'll just say this for everyone listening, especially the folks that are a little bit newer into this game, the idea of hero products, you know, the things are going to sell 50, 100 a day, uh, unless you have the buy-in and the backup to purchase the next round of inventory, next probably two, three rounds of inventory and the marketing for it, uh, it's going to be hard to buy their way in. And there's a lot of people selling courses on that because that's sexy and that has good screenshots and that gets people in the door. But, you know, I think going back to what you said before was, you know, being realistic of where you are. And knowing that sometimes maybe it's just going to be a longer road. Maybe someone sold out of their last business and that's how they were able to do the supplement business because they cashed out a million dollars on a previous business they had. And they're like, I just want to figure this out. You're going to have a lot more difficult time. Whereas there's, there's thousands of niches that are within Amazon that you could be going after. And some of them are just going to be maybe a little bit of a different mindset. And the more you get around other people that can start seeing some of the forest of the trees and, you know, help you with it. And like you guys had said before, it becomes more real when you're surrounded by other people. I know you use the term, if these guys could do this, um, yeah. that, you know, <laughs> anyone can do it. So, um, so yeah, so that's that's i think definitely something to get around other people so it becomes more realistic and realize that you know it can be done and so or even if you're 
you know, at a certain level that you can get to the next level because there's other people. So uh, as we close this out here, is there any other closing advice that you guys have for folks listening? Resilience is important. Okay. Uh, perseverance is important. Open-mindedness is important. Um, and being very uh, chess-like thinking in how you approach things and being realistic. Uh, if we didn't read that book by Mike McCallowitz, Profit First for e-commerce would be a different business totally. And we'd be banging our heads up against the wall frustrated. So uh, what does that take away? The value of having mentors and listening to others. That would be a key takeaway from my side. Brian? Awesome. Yeah. Uh, drop the ego. Learn every day. Problems will happen. Um, problems I, yes they, they will happen uh, be, be resilient and uh, you know go ahead John you say something? I was going to say know your limitations mm, exactly. you know what I mean because you know we think we can do everything alone or we can oh I got this figured out no. and learn go away spend money go to mastermind courses like like if you learn if you spend say five thousand dollars at a mastermind course and you learn one thing that could be a six figure thing you can learn yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. honestly speaking, easily. Kevin, easily it happened with us, with you. Yeah. You know, thank you. You yeah. know, it we, wasn't we, you. It was that lady actually, but you know, I'll make right. you feel good. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but just the fact you created you the environment room with other people. And yeah. so, you know, the way I look at it is when I run masterminds, I like to, I don't have to be the smartest one in the room or the one that has all the answers. It's a, just another example of mastermind, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's just, setting something up and creating the environment and you know but all joking aside you repeatedly guided us in the right direction because we kept on saying no no i got a great idea and you're like no no do yeah. this mm. so everyone needs thank a, you everyone needs a well, coach no matter what what part you are in your in your if you can be doing this for another 10 years i'll still be doing this still be asking you questions kevin i'll still be in part of your masterminds i will so yes we will aware. yes yeah. Well, thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate it. And it was uh, great having you and all the masterminds that uh, an honor. have been a part. Yeah. So it was, uh, it was an honor having the two of you on uh, this podcast, sharing your, your background and your story with everyone else, because uh, I definitely think people are going to get a lot out of it. So mm -hmm. thank you both so much. And thank you for giving back to the community with uh, your knowledge and uh, experience. Thank you very much for having us, Kevin. Appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks. Thanks. Yep. Take care now. Take yep. care.